Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. We're presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. Time to shine the light right now on Navy men's rugby. The first couple of weeks of their inaugural season as a varsity program have gone swimmingly so far for head coach Gavin Hickey and company. And, and coach, just to take what the alumni have worked incredibly hard for here to get this program status raised up to the varsity level, just what does it mean to be able to now cash that in and start building them a product at the varsity level that they can be even prouder of uh, that they've been participants on and build at the club level? Yeah, it's a great question, Pete. It means everything. It means everything. We were founded in 1963. Next year is our 60th anniversary. And for our founding uh, members to witness the journey and to experience where we are today, it's got to be the most gratif gratifying and satisfying moment um, of their rugby careers, I hope, their rugby lives. And to be able to live it each day with our current midshipmen, uh, we feel the weight of responsibility, but it's it's fantastic. And now we're just starting a, the first steps on a new journey. So Navy rugby is vibrant. It's 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 exciting. It is uh, just amazing to be part of this journey. And we're we're all fired up. What does what do the additional resources mean to your program as you all continue to build now? Um, it means a huge man. Here we are talking about Navy rugby. I mean that for a start is is a big deal, right? So the the I walked through in AAA the other day and I'm getting fist bumps and congratulating on a <laughs> win that people maybe didn't know about a year ago. That, that's huge. So just the, the recognition, the awareness um, of, of the fact that we're playing all these games is, is fantastic. And then NAAA support in terms of the logistics, in terms of our travel, um, in terms of having RJ as our SID, you know, it's, it's massive. So the more eyes that are on us, the more awareness there is both internally and externally on Navy rugby, it's all good. You've had great athletes in the past, obviously, as part of this program. But the elevation of status, what does that mean now as you try to attract even more great athletes and maybe even a greater athlete uh, to attend the Naval Academy? Because you can offer him something even more now that, that may not have been available there. Well, you're spot on with that. You know, in the early days, I think Navy rugby had a bit of a head start on, on other collegiate teams because we were always fitter. We were always stronger. But as more and more collegiate programs have gone varsity, then that has perhaps negatively impacted us a little bit. But now going varsity, you know, really what it does, it legitimizes us to every young high school player who wants to play collegiate rugby at the top level. And that's fantastic. So now, you know, half the time this, this fall already has been spent uh, showing young recruits around the Naval Academy. And, and, you know, once they get here, once they see what we have to offer, I think every young man and, and woman or every young boy and girl wants to come here and play rugby. And, you know, just again, going back to our alumni, you see the facilities we have, you see what we can offer and being part of, of a midshipman here who plays rugby, it doesn't get any better. What's been the key over the first uh, two varsity games here to your team playing so well? Well, uh, that's a good question as well. We are on a journey. We're on our own journey. And we can't uh, dictate who we play against in terms of how good our opponents are. A schedule gets laid out for us. Things are going to get a lot tougher very soon. So we'll be, we'll be tested further. But going back to our own journey, you know, we have to build on week to week um, performances. So we set ourselves up uh, in terms of our set piece. That's our scrums, our line outs. They've got to be 100% every game. They were in our first game. They slipped a little bit last week. So we're going to address that this week. And then our defense, um, you know, being who we are, uh, Department of Defense, you know, we, we really do pride ourselves on being defenders of not only uh, Navy rugby, but defenders of our country. So our defense really does need to be very, very strong. So We've we've shown that the last couple of games, shutting out the opponents. I don't expect that to continue because one penalty kick against us is, is three points on the scoreboard for the opponents. But it does show that we're being pretty disciplined and shows that defense it's very important to us. And for who we are and who we represent, that's that's critical to us going forward. How do you challenge a guy like Lewis Gray to continue to elevate his performance week by week right now for you? None of us are the finished article. And Lewis has a desperation to be the very best he can be. And with COVID in the past and everything, you know, he's still probably, uh, he's probably not scratching the surface, but he still has a lot more in him. You know, his dad is a Marine. Lewis wants to be a Marine. He knows that what it takes to, to perform at the highest level. And, um, you know, Lewis could well be one of our first players who are ever drafted into Major League Rugby and could play rugby at a higher level beyond the Naval Academy. And um, should his service uh, allow for that. But 
Lewis Gray is, is a special rugby player, and we're very excited to see how he goes the rest of the season. At the same time, having guys like Peter, having guys like Ben, setting standards that are important every day within the program, because a program is greater than one person. But to have guys like that that are setting your standard for you every day, what do they mean? And what do those standards mean to developing the type of program you're looking to build here? The standards mean everything. You know, as I said, no one's our finished product and we're not the finished article. So we have to work on this every single day. And we talk a lot about culture. We talk a lot about our own identity uh, each year as an individual team, uh, as, a, as, a, as a set team every year. The teams are different every year, albeit a number of same individuals, but the team itself is different every year. So I challenge the players every year to create their identity as this year's team. And this year is a little bit fitting. We have new uniforms coming in and we talk about leaving the jersey in a better place. And we are literally going to try to measure that this year with our new uniforms that we expect to be wearing this weekend. So really the challenge for every one of our guys is leave this jersey in a better place. So come next May or when we sit down, maybe next August, uh, going over to Ireland to play Notre Dame in, in our rugby match over there, we'll see if our players have left this jersey in a better place. And you know, that, that's not something that, that just happens. That is something that we strive for day after day after day. And we have to be consistent to that. So uh, we're very excited about that. But again, that's, that's rugby culture. That's Navy rugby culture is um, it's much bigger than the individual. And that's something that we, we preach a lot. I'll let you out on this professionally for you. What's the sense of pride of, uh, you know what the, the, the physical mission means uh, to the academy? To, what's that sense of pride to be able to lead this team into a varsity status and, and knowing what rugby means to all the alumni that have come before? This, I've been very fortunate, Pete, with my own rugby career, you know, as a player and, and even as a coach. Uh, this is a highlight of everything for me. And uh, I mean that sincerely. To be able to lead the midshipmen, Navy rugby, it's, it's the greatest gift I could have ever asked for. And it's the greatest gift I could ever be given. And, and really what we're trying to do here is, is if you look at rugby, rugby is just chaos. It's complete chaos. It's attack, it's defense, it's a kick, it's, it's counterattack, it's everything. Um, but we believe fully that if you can make sense of that chaos and you can stay composed in that chaos and you can communicate effectively in that chaos, then that lends itself to being the best um, Marine Corps officer or Navy officer in the fleet that you can be. So we fully believe in the mission here in terms of Navy rugby lending itself to be the best leaders that we can be in the fleet. And that's something we work for every single day. Coach, hope it's the first of many visits. Congratulations on the start of the season and best of luck with the rest of the campaign. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time, Pete. Really appreciate it. Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. As always, brought to you by our good friends at the Navy Federal Credit Union. Pleased to be joined now by head women's rugby coach Murph McCarthy. And coach, first of all, to have your program, you guys have been doing terrific work, obviously, on the, the club circuit. But to have your program elevated now to varsity status, what will that mean for the program and does it allow you now to even take this program to even greater heights? Well, um, with the new resources uh, that we have uh, and the extra support, now the short answer, it's, it's going to take us, you know, to be bigger, stronger, faster, and, and better rugby players. Uh, and how that works is, you know, we're going to have weight room time where we didn't have weight room time before. Uh, you know, our, our flexibility with getting stuff like team tables uh, is a whole lot different than it was in years past. Um, and, you know, we are essentially, you know, a, an organic rugby team. Like we are, we are homegrown. Like everything comes from right here. Everybody's X something. Like the amount of people that have played rugby on our squad is, it's negligible. So once we have the ability, you know, to meet some good midshipman candidates from, around the country with four or five years of rugby under the belt, as you can imagine, that will, uh, that will simplify a lot of things. I don't, I don't think it's going to change that much about how we play. We're, we're pretty, we're pretty stringent on the fundamentals. Um, and defense is a big thing of ours, but just those, uh, couple players each year that have some experience, they bump up the rugby IQ of the whole squad exponentially. The, the fact that this program, both men and women, has the type of support it's had uh, in the past just from alumni. And, and obviously, look, let's face it, there are a lot of rugby enthusiasts uh, out there that have really been supportive of uh, Navy rugby as a club sport. Uh, to kind of pay off 
on that support and, and obviously the great alumni base, because I'm sure these athletes, well, one thing we talk about with all the other athletes is the brotherhood uh, that develops. And I imagine the same thing uh, is palpable here with all of those that have played rugby at the academy before. These athletes are seeing the same support uh, from that alumni base, are they not? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for lack of a better term, rugby rugby folks are a little nuts. They're crazy about some rugby. And it's it's like a lifelong support thing. I mean, when I, when I was a midshipman, I knew who Ernie Blake was. I knew who John Prusmack was, uh, General Fulford, Sam Roan. I knew who all those guys. Those were the guys that were rooting for the program uh, to get to the next level. And, you know, they're still around, uh, minus John. May he rest in peace. But that's that's kind of the way rugby is. It's like a family. Let's br let's bring everything to the next level. And the alumni support has been off the charts. To, to have your first game under your belt, I imagine there was a ton of anticipation. But to have it go the way it did, thoughts on your the way your first outing with Lander went? Um, we were pretty pleased, obviously. Like, it went well. Um, it was a very uh, consistent uh, attack and defense the whole time. Like, we didn't score, score all the points in the first 20 minutes. Um, it was, you know, we, we scored a try every eight or nine minutes. Uh, and when we were in defense, you know, they had some had some strong, fast players, and we were able to contain them, and just kind of be patient and wait for our opportunity uh, for some kind of turnover or infraction uh, so we could get the ball back. So everything we've kind of been talking about um, in film and in training uh, kind of came to fruition on Saturday, and it was, uh, you know, it was great, you know, big crowd. Uh, the weather was good. You know, it was it was uh, it was special to get that first varsity win. Obviously, you know, Chelsea hit a couple for you, but you also look like you had really solid balance uh, for a first game. Would that be a fair statement? I would concur. Yeah, we uh, the Fords did a lot of work as they always do, uh, and they had a lot of ball in hand. So we had a lot of our Fords taking the ball into contact, grinding it out, you know, supporting it, getting it back out, grinding it out. And then uh, when our decision makers felt like that it was time, uh, they would get the ball out to the backs and the backs had some space, got to get it into what I call fourth gear and see what was out there. And it worked out pretty well for us. To be able now, especially with the elevation of our city status, more eyeballs are going to be on this. Uh, the Naval Academy now has grown to 35 varsity programs. It's one of the biggest Division One offerings uh, that are out there. I, I imagine you and your team uh, look forward now to being able to kind of educate the, the Naval Academy community and those around Annapolis and others uh, that, you know, certainly enjoy rugby around the area uh, on your program now and, and obviously gain even greater support. I imagine as this thing goes along, as you, you alluded to, the, the good crowd for the opener, I imagine uh, this is a great opportunity to educate folks, though, and maybe even build on that some more, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's the fastest growing sport in the U.S. Uh, them having sevens in the Olympics has been huge. You know, uh, uh, World Cup's going to be here for the men. World Cup's going to be here in the U.S. Uh, for the women as well. And, you know, whenever I meet people, uh, that I don't already know around the yard. They're like, I came out to your match last spring. That was awesome. Uh, so once you hear about it, you know, because you kind of want to see, uh, you know, I'd never seen a lacrosse game before I came to the Naval Academy. And, you know, it seemed like everybody I met was from Long Island. So I went and checked that out. And there I was. Uh, so I think we're going to have a lot more of that uh, foot traffic, if you will, uh, because of the elevation to varsity status. No question. The fact that obviously you're an academy grad, I know there's pride there. And when you now try to sell uh, potential young ladies who do experience rugby before they get uh, to the college level, just the fact that you can sell the academy and really have that educated opinion on what the academy can do for these young ladies, uh, how much of that is a selling point now that you'll be able to uh, bring to the forefront in recruiting? Well, yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm lucky. Like I don't have to source out uh, a lot of my knowledge about you know what it's like to be a midshipman and what it's going to take and the opportunities uh, there beyond you know because I've got uh, you know roughly a thousand classmates who have done the other things uh, besides being a marine and flying a helicopter. Uh, so it's neat when they ask the obscure questions. Most of them I know. Uh, you know I can't get into the nuances exactly how the pipeline works if you want to be a Navy doctor. However, comma like I can tell you. 
pretty much what your summers are going to be like, you know, what the first semester is going to be like and so on and so forth. And it's, it's a really valuable tool to have, you know, literally right on the front of your skull. I'll let you out on this. If you have the opportunity to have an audience of people that have never seen rugby, what, how would you sell it to them as a sport uh, that they really need to come out and sample and think that they would enjoy? Oh, as a spectator? I would, I would say it's a no brainer. Like what other sports do you like? And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's an easy tie in with all the sports. I mean, uh, for soccer, you know, we do kick the ball. We are attacking space. Uh, we do call it elegant violence. You know, soccer folks, right. Like to refer to the beauty of it. Um, and, you know, if you're a football person, there's definitely some smash mouth things about it. I mean, it's full contact. We don't wear any pads. Uh, so that's an easy sell. And everybody out there is having a blast. It's just a festive atmosphere. Uh, so that would be easier. And for the players, you know, because um, we're still going to have, you know, walk-ons here at Navy. You know, mark my words, it's forever going to be a thing. And it's just like, um, do you like to work hard? Are you coachable? Do you think you'd be a good teammate? I think you'd probably be good at rugby if you can answer me in the affirmative for those three things. Coach, hope it's the first of many visits. Congratulations on the inaugural win and best of luck with the rest of the campaign. You bet, Pete. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.